right, so in our last example, we looked at how to set up a very basic line chart using a little bit of JavaScript, but mostly just having our data and then plugging it in to chart.js and letting it generate the graph. Um, now, this is basically the same thing as before, but I've, I'm using a slightly different set of data. This is world population over time from the year 1500 to present and then predicting into the future. Um, and basically, we're just going to use this because it's a little I think a little more interesting, um, but it's the same idea here. So we've got our data, we've got our labels, which is what appears on the x-axis, and then this options um, section that allows us to specify or sort of plug it into chart.js. But um, our graphic here is really boring, and that's on purpose. Uh, chart.js doesn't want you to just sort of use its defaults. It's really meant to be a blank canvas for you to get excited and start making this look really great. So um, we're going to add some stuff to this um, that should, yeah, hopefully make it look really awesome. Um, so we've already seen how to add the labels and our data and stuff like that. I think maybe a good thing to do first would be to add a title to our chart. How else are we supposed to know what we're looking at here? So I'm going to create another variable. I'm going to call this title. And this will be world population. Um, you could, these are the places where you're going to start exploring and playing and getting feedback and seeing what makes your um, chart really communicate and work well. And that's very much that kind of like iterative design process that we'll be doing this whole class. Um, so to add our title here, um, you'll notice we have this type um, setting, we have the data. Below that, I'm going to add a comma. And there's a section called options that we can add a bunch of stuff to. Um, the first one is title. And the title, we can tell it to display the title, so true. And then um, I want the text to be the title that I defined up here. Now, you could type it in right here. I think some things are nicer to have them as variables at the top, because then it allows you to really quickly modify and change them. And you don't have to hunt through this big thing to find those values. So now, as you work, run, you know, make a little change and then run it and see um, if it's working and if it does what you want it to do, rather than doing everything all at once and then hoping everything works, because then you're just chasing your tail trying to find why it's not doing what you want it to do. So here you can see now it says world population up at the top, which is cool. Um, the other thing that I noticed right away is this um, gray box and undefined. So this is the legend. This tells us what this data is. And in this case, I only have one data set. And I don't think it's very helpful to have this up here, in part because it doesn't tell us anything. And also just it's kind of redundant. So I'm going to remove that. And um, that is also under options, uh, legend. And then inside this, I'm going to say display false, which is going to turn it off. And again, I'm going to run this. And now we can see it says world population, and the legend is gone. This looks good. Um, let's see. What's next? Um, let's get rid of this drab gray and start making some aesthetic changes. So that happens up in our data section here. And right below where we add the data, um, we can add some additional parameters. The first thing I think I want to do is get rid of this gray fill color. Um, I don't know why it's there. It doesn't really make sense. I don't think it really allows us to read the chart as well as I think we could do. So we can specify fill and false. This is the same as the legend here. We can use false to turn this off. And now we get this nice clean line, which looks cool. Well, let's, let's add some color. This is too boring. Uh, so below that, I'm going to say border color. Now, color in chart.js and web design is specified a couple of different ways. But the way that's probably most familiar to you is RGB, red, green, blue color. This is how Photoshop, Illustrator, uh, applications like that work. Um, if you're not comfortable with RGB color, um, I'd recommend just opening a tab with like a color picker. And that'll help you pick out a color that you want to work with. Um, and then we have to format it like this. So you'll notice it's in quotation marks. RGB parentheses, and then we can specify our color. So I'm going to do 255, 150. Now, if I run this, you can see it's changed the color of that line, which looks great. Now, you might be wondering, how do I know that this is called border color and not line color or whatever? That's all in the documentation here. 
Um, I've pulled out the stuff that I think will be helpful for you, so you don't have to go digging, um, but still the documentation really is kind of the main source for this stuff. Um, that looks good. Let's change then these dots. So when um, each data point that's drawn in our line chart gets a little circle, and I want to modify this a little bit um, in a couple of ways. One thing, um, I think maybe these dots are a little too small, so we can make those bigger. This is point radius. Let's go ahead and make that 10. That's maybe too big, but you know we can play with that for now. At least you can see that. And then we can also change their size when you hover. You see how this like shrinks down. Um, we could make them, for example, get bigger. And that's point, oops, point hover radius. Oops, colon. So this is a good, ah, you can't really see that here. Um, but this is a really good example of what the console is for. So if, before I had a semicolon here by accident. And when I run this, it's a syntax error missing colon after property. And it says line 16. It's highlighted here. Um, this is it trying to do its best to help you find where things might have gone wrong. Um, sometimes it's more helpful than others. This is a really useful thing. And it's just showing me that I need a colon instead of a semicolon. Cool. So that looks good. And now when I hover it, it gets a little bit bigger, which is kind of nice. And these are the places, just like with color and everything else, where you can really kind of tune in how you want this stuff to look, how you want your chart to work. I think I like that. That looks good. Um, next thing, I really don't like the transparent gray background on these dots. It does not make sense in the visual language that we have going here. So I'm going to add background color. And again, this is red, green, and blue. Let's make it the same. No, let's make it a little bit darker than the line itself. So I'll just do a little variation here. Nice. Now, I don't know if you can see it, but they have this um, bright orange outline, which is the same as the line color. I think that looks a little funky. Let's just make it the same color as the fill so that we don't see it. So this is point border color. And there we go. I think that looks good. Um, let's see, what should we change next? Oh, so we can change the way this line kind of curves and behaves. So you can see right now, it forms like a nice even curve between the points, which is cool. Um, but if you change the line tension variable, you can uh, manipulate how this works. So if we make it zero, it's going to be perfectly straight line segments between our points. Um, this might work really well for very dense data. So if we were plotting a whole bunch of stuff over time, um, that might be a better option. Um, generally, values between zero and one are good here. But the really awesome thing about code is we can just play with this and see what it looks like. So one or two, you know, this turns into like limp spaghetti noodle. That's clearly not what we want. 0 0.6, still maybe a little too wiggly. 0 0.2 looks pretty close to the default 0.3. So you don't have to add this, but this could be something that allows you to really tweak how that curve kind of gets drawn. I'm going to leave it like this. I think this looks good. Um, next, let's add one more thing uh, to our points here. And we can change, right now it's drawing circles by default, but we can actually change that. So we can say point style, and there's a whole bunch of different things that we can apply here. Um, and you'll find the, the list of that in the documentation. But I'm going to do rect, rectangle, uh, rotate. And that draws these nice little diamond shapes. You can also just do rectangle. It's another sort of horizontal. Um, let's see if I can remember. Yeah, there's stars. There's a cross. There's a couple other ones, depending on what you want. I like this rect rot, right, rotated rectangle. I think this looks kind of nice. Cool. So we've changed some of the style of the, the line and the points, um, changed some colors and stuff like that. But um, right now, it's hard to tell what is this data. We see these numbers over here. Now, it's population. So we guess that these are population numbers. But we clearly know these numbers are not like the actual population. Um, and down here, we've got our dates. And that might be clear. It might not. So let's add some labels to our axes. We do that down in options. And I'm going to do this below the legend part here. Oh, no, you can't see that. Let me, hopefully, that wasn't cut off before. 
Um, sorry if it was you were yelling at me through your computer. Um, but let's go ahead and um, change our scales. So scales are X and Y. And inside this, then, we can set our Y axes and our X axes. And um, for this uh, Y axis, I'm going to say scale label. And inside that, we say display true. We'd like to see it. And we say label string. And this is the text that will appear. And in this case, I think it's important that we provide some context that these numbers are in millions. So we can say population in parentheses in millions. And now you'll see it appears over here, much clearer. We can go ahead and add our x axes as well. So we'll do comma x axes. And we'll say scale label also display true and the label string will just say uh, year. So again, maybe we don't need it down below. I think it kind of makes sense here just so we really quickly understand what we're seeing. Um, two more things for us to add. The first is um, now when I hover over the data point, I see the year at the top in bold 2000 and then I see um, this number, and that number is the value at that data point. But it's, again, you know, maybe we could make this a little more clear what we're looking at. So if we go up to our data set, um, we can also add a label to this. And I'm gonna do this right here. I'm gonna say label. And again, I'm gonna say population in millions. Now this is restating what's on the left side, but I actually think in this case, that makes sense. So now when I hover over it, it says population in millions, colon, and then the value. There's a lot we can do to change these tooltips, these hovering things. Um, and we'll look at more of that in, in coming weeks. But for now, I think at least this helps kind of give some context. Last thing for this, and then um, in the next videos, we'll keep adding kind of to this idea. Um, let's say that we want to change the typography here. Um, now, I think the font looks pretty good, but maybe we want to make it bigger, or we just want to be able to sort of style that for our whole chart. Um, you could do it for individual sections, but that's going to be a little harder. Instead, right before we create our chart, we can add these extra lines. And I'm just going to copy paste these because they're kind of lengthy. Um, let's talk about what we're seeing here. So chart is our overall, our whole chart, and we're setting these defaults. Um, for the whole thing, and in this case, the parameter is default font family, and this is going to be the font that gets used in the entire chart, in labels, in um, the axes, all of that kind of stuff. And you'll notice it's um, this big long string divided by commas, and um, this is because in web design, uh, fonts need to be, well, well, we can talk more about fonts in detail, but um, generally they need to be on the user's computer, not on the server. So um, this gives us a string of defaults for it to look at, uh, look for. So if Helvetica Noia is available, it'll use that. If not, it'll use Helvetica. If that's not available, Arial. And if that's not available, it'll just use the default sans serif font. Um, so we could easily change this to be something else. Um, we're also changing the font color to be this gray um, and the font size to be 16. So let's go ahead and run this again. And now we can see actually the font stays the same because those are the defaults for um, chart.js, but we've been able to make it bigger. We could change this color. Maybe we want it to be zero, so black, cool. Um, we could make the font size bigger or smaller or whatever we want to do, depending on the context. Now you can also do some of these things individually in um, different parameters. So you can change font size and stuff for the scale and all of that. But this is a really quick way um, to just sort of globally affect this and see how this looks. Um, yeah, that's a lot of stuff. And I realize that these um, this notation system can be kind of confusing um, to get started. And you're probably going to get errors. Using the code examples as a template to get started is going to be really helpful. Um, and in the next videos, we'll look at adding some additional stuff that should make our charts really cool. Um, interactive, stuff like that.